Yo, what's good YouTube? This is Jay from T and J and we're giving a little bit of a different episode here. We are going to premiere the rookie showcase. This is going to be a showcase of our triple A and double A teams in a game. Uh, this is actually kind of important. Let me explain why. I know you cannot gather a lot of information on a one game sample size. But, you know, like, you're, like for example, if you're getting recruited out of high school, you know the college scouts are coming to see you for one particular game. You're going to show up and show your A game. That's what I'm expecting these guys to do. Why in this AAA game? Because, you know what? My middle infielder, Jorge Mateo, is not doing well. Let's just call it what it is. He's not doing well. So, there possibly could be a guy in this middle infield that could get moved up based on this game that I play. I want to see somebody show up. I want to see somebody who can, you know, come through because I'm going to need a guy on the MLB roster who could be reliable at the second base. And maybe Hernan Perez can be that guy. I don't know. But even possibly an outfielder like Kyle Wren, Boog Powell. Uh, I mean, these guys are all options. Uh, Brett Phillips had his chance at center field. He did pretty well. But we just got to see. I mean, we have options here. And for our double A guys, this is just a chance to get familiar with them see how well john taylor is progressing he's our top prospect he actually looks like he's progressing in pretty much every category his hitting zones are still blue they need to get better um james chi as well he's our top pro he's our second best prospect i think uh and there's other guys like larry todd was a catcher we we drafted um i mean there's there's quite a bit of guys that we have um that we can keep an eye on as the years go on um but let's just get into some gameplay, man. Let's just look at some guys who I'm looking at, though. Uh, Brian Abraham is this shortstop I signed in the offseason. Uh, he was in free agency. 92 stealing. That's pretty good. But he has 76 speed. Um, that's kind of weird. But Warner Stewart was a guy that we signed in free agency. Also, the thing is he had C potential when we first got him in free agency. Now he's at D potential. I mean, he must have regressed. I don't know what it was because let's look at his stats. He's in 255, so he's not hitting horrible, but he's not hitting great as well. So uh, Sean Overmeyer, I think this is a guy we actually signed in free agency as well. So Michael Worth is actually a guy that um, probably won't pitch this game. Uh, we'll see. I think uh, I think Kyle Funkhauser is the guy that's going to be pitching. Uh, he's possibly a guy that can be moved up probably next year. He's probably not looking at it this year. He's 70 overall. Uh, he has pretty decent stats. Uh, strikeouts for 966. So he still has a while to go to progress. Kyle Wren is a guy that I'm paying attention to for sure. Uh, he's a good hitter. Uh, so I want to see him hit the ball hard. Bug Powell as well. He's a good hitter. So um, noting Nottingham, uh, he's hitting 324 in AAA, which is funny because remember how much he was struggling in the beginning of the year? He couldn't do anything. But now he's showing out at AAA. So you never know. Uh, if he does well we'll see because you know why he's important is because uh the catcher that we trade traded for i forgot his name oh stewart turner a lot of trades when i was looking at trade finder a lot of trades wanted him i mean a lot of teams wanted him in the trade so um if they do want him i don't know if i i would give him up right away because i just traded for him but jacob Not nottingham would have to play a big role uh, maybe he just needed some work at AAA. I don't know. But uh, Sean Overmeyer, I don't think he's a guy that's going to move there. Lucas Urseg is actually progressing at a very slow rate. I thought he would be progressing at a faster rate. I thought he would be in the low 70s by now because in the beginning of this franchise, I thought Travis Shaw, I didn't know how good he would pan out, but we took a chance on him and he ended up panning out. Um, like I said, I mean, these other guys, Book Powell. Uh, Michael Reed in double A. Uh, he's getting kind of older, but he is still a prospect in the Brewers organization. Um, I don't know. Let's just get into this game. Let's just see who's going to show up. I want to see some particular guys show up, but let's just see how everybody does. Um, these prospects. Let's see if they can show up when the brights are, the lights are bright. I can't even talk. But let's just get into this game plan. Let's, let's not waste any more time. Let's go. So we have our Triple A affiliate, the Colorado Springs Sky Sox, going up against Nashville. So we have Kyle Funkhauser on the mound for our Triple A squad, and uh, here early in the game, uh, he's pitching pretty good. Uh, 
he was getting a lot of batters out. Uh, he was getting a lot of batters at ground out. Not a lot of strikeouts, but here, Boog Powell, I've been looking to play with him. And uh, I've been looking forward to this because I've only played with Brett Phillips, to be honest, at the MLB level. So it was good to play with some of these prospects. Boog Powell with the hit to start the game, but Kyle Wren grounds out to the double play. And uh, Lucas Erceg comes up next, strikes out. Lucas Erceg was not impressive in this game. Uh, he didn't hit the ball well. He struck out a couple of times. But Brian Abraham was the shortstop prospect I signed in the offseason. Uh, he comes through with a hit up the middle. Um, I'm excited to see that because uh, as long as he can hit the ball hard and uh, he can at least put the ball in play, um, we could use him. You never know at the MLB level because uh, Jorge Mateo is on his last leg. I mean, he's he's still young. You know, I'm not giving up on Jorge Mateo, but he's not doing so well this year. But here I get into a base rundown, and uh, I, I kind of anticipated a bad throw on that throw to first, so I started going home. But here Tyler, Taylor Heineman, um, he's actually a prospect of ours. He gets a hit to the right center gap there. Uh, actually, Hyman's actually a catcher in our organization, but he's 27 years old, but he can, he has like 88 vision. He can see the ball pretty well, um, but he, only, he has only 65 overall, C potential. So uh, he's a guy that could potentially, maybe down the, a long, long down the line, maybe can touch if he uh, improves his potential. But here, Kyle Wren is coming through with a two-run RBI double. Uh, so, you know, it's good to see Kyle Wren hitting the ball. But here's the problem with Kyle Wren is that on a lot of these hits, he could not feel the ball cleanly. Uh, there were multiple times in this game where Kyle Wren would get a grounder, I mean a base hit to the left side so it would go right to him. And he'd like botch it. He wouldn't feel it cleanly. Um, he wouldn't, you know, exactly, he didn't exactly have the best of arm strength either. Um, his feeling is only 54 and his arm strength is at 48. So it's not going to improve much. He's 27 years old, C potential. And here's an example right here. So he's going to feel this, gr this, uh, base hit and he's going to botch it for a second, but he is going to recover and throw the guy out a second. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of the balls hit to his side. He just bobbled. So I can't have that in outfield, especially at the MLB level. We can't tolerate, you know, guys mishandling throws. But here's Hyman again. Uh, he gets another hit to the right side. So what's funny is that uh, the announcers during this game are saying how he's been struggling. And, but he, he actually had a good bounce back game. And here's Brett Phillips with the hit to the left side. Uh, you know Brett Phillips. He's, he actually is doing pretty I mean, he's doing decent at the MLB level in real life, but uh, he actually took over for Keon Broxton because they optioned Keon Broxton to the minors. So um, Brett Phillips is getting his chance at the MLB level, but it's not much better than Broxton, to be honest. Broxton, I think, was hitting maybe like 215. I think uh, Phillips is hitting 220. So here's Hyman again at the plate. He's getting a nice hit there. This is a second double on the day, so he is seeing the ball well. Uh, one thing I like about this AAA squad is that we can hit the ball. Everybody in the lineup can hit, and here's Book Powell with a chance to drive in the run, and he doesn't do it. He grounds out to short, but here's Brett Phillips again. He comes up with a hit up the middle. Uh, Brett Phillips, you know, I like him a lot, but I do want to give Book Powell a chance, and here's Book Powell again right as we speak and look at this he gets robbed of a hit to the left side i like what i'm seeing from book powell because you know the thing about him is that he's hitting the ball hard every single time uh i, I think i did strike out with him but he's hitting the ball hard every single time i mean every single time he's in a good solid liner um and you know what he covers a lot of ground in center field i um, not saying i would probably play him in center field if he made it up but he has 72 reaction, which isn't bad. 67 fielding, which isn't too bad. I mean, it's bad, but uh, it's not too bad. And 74 speed. So he's doing pretty well. Uh, he's 26 years old, though. But they're going to go on to win this one. 4-2. We do get 11 hits, though. But uh, I like what I saw from Boog Powell. I like what I saw from uh, Abraham, our shortstop. But here at the AA level, 
this is where we struggle. So I played this game mainly to see uh, James Chi and John Taylor. And there's John Taylor popping out to the first baseman. And James Chi is on the mound. And he's giving up a hit right here. But he had some pretty solid innings. I actually wanted to pitch at least four innings with him. And I did that. And right there... That's actually Torrey Hunter Jr. that popped up, popped that ball up. But look who's at double-A level, Albert Pujols. So Albert Pujols, actually, I looked into their organization. You will never get – he is 57 overall, 57. He's 38 years old at this point, but 57 overall. And you know what? I looked at his contract. He still owed $120 million over the next four years. That is insane. To be 57 overall and be owed 120 million, and that is just insane. But here, uh, I'm actually swiping a bag. Uh, I forgot who that's that's with, but <laughs> but I'm so distracted by this Albert Pujols thing that uh, I see John Taylor get to hit. But Victor Roach is going to end the game here. But Albert Pujols, that's a, that's crazy though. 57 overall. He's the, he's the worst first baseman in their organization, but they can't get rid of him. He's owed $120 million. But that's going to do it, man. Our double-A team, they need help on the offensive end, so we might have to trade for some prospects. Uh, and like I said, Torrey Hunter Jr. was in this game, so he might be a potential option for us to trade. Jerry Guerra, I think, hauled back him and another prospect, maybe another couple prospects for uh, Torrey Hunter Jr., so uh, he's possibly a guy that we can go after. Uh, but that's going to do it, man. Uh, our AAA team, we're going to have some decisions to make as far as who to give a real chance to if somebody does get hurt in the event if somebody does get hurt or we trade Jose Bautista. But hit subscribe, man. Hit that like button. We'll be back for the next episode.